Howdy, howdy. How you doing, Demon Mama? Hi, I'm doing turn on my camera great. Here. Let me get you up on here real quick. Yay, Riverboat Jack, it's so great to see you. Hold on, let me get you up on the big screen. Hi. And put the text up here. Now everybody can see you. Wait, why is it not full screen? Go full screen. There we go. Sorry about that. Sorry about the no slow worries. lumpy here. Yay, it's wonderful to have you on. Wow. Yeah, it's, good. it's good to finally talk to you. We, we, yeah, we've like crossed paths. But have we ever have we ever just like one on one talked? I don't think we've won on well, maybe for a little bit. I came on for that PV event that you did a while ago. Um, yeah. And I feel like it I feel like maybe a, like a long time ago we have, but it's been a long time regardless. So yeah, it's really for sure. good to have you on. <laughs> so uh so yeah, well welcome to the show. Thank you so much for coming on for this wonderful signal night. Uh yeah. we are sort of celebrating the end of what we call Impmas, which is uh, it's it happens in the vague area of Christmas, but it's not it's distinct from Christmas, and it goes on as long as we want, and it starts as early as we want, and we've had a fairly long one this year. In fact, you can actually see the tree is still up with all the ornaments people sent as well, and um, yeah, it's been great. So uh, welcome, and uh, yeah. Uh, so um, so how have you been? What have you been up I've to? Been I've been good. Uh, I just got back from New York City. Um, I. First time, first time being there. Uh, I went with my partner. Um, my my partner and I are working on like a trans femme inclusive lingerie line. Um, That's so, so cool. We, we went we went to like a, a textile show to like look at fabrics and stuff, and then I went and like got like professionally fitted by. Um, like uh, a, a business in New York that does like professional industry fittings. Uh -huh. um, and it, it was, it was super, super interesting. Uh, that sounds amazing, like, honestly. It was really cool, but it also really hammered home the need for what, what we're trying to do, what, what yeah. my partner is really trying to do. And um because part, part of the problem with like lingerie, if, if people aren't like, aware of this is just that um sizing is in in the lingerie business sizing is basically uh catering towards the most common body type mm -hmm. so if you happen to have a larger rib cage you know even if you have relatively small boobs your your ability to wear cute underwear is basically non-existent yeah, um, it, it takes a lot of uh, a lot of shooting in the dark. Uh, yeah. 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 Well, and and it was really hammered home because like I went to this professional fitter, and she she was deeply ashamed and embarrassed of like her company because she couldn't find like a a bra that they had in stock that was both like fashionable and like would fit my rib cage and i'm not like a super large person uh -huh. like she she was trying to find stuff that would fit me but like they just didn't have it in stock yeah um and so yeah it's been it, it was really validating to basically be like even this place that like has tons of underwear on hand is running into this problem yep yeah and uh so yeah, my, my partner is working on like expanded sizing and also working on like cute feminine lingerie that also like doesn't require tucking, yeah. which is nice. That's really um, cool. Yeah. I, 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 please keep me up to date on that. Is there a newsletter I can join? Cause that sounds genuinely incredible. And I would love yeah. to be a part of that. <laughs> Let I me would, just, I would, um... I, would, I would be an early, I would be an early adopter. Okay. We got a whole household of people who'd benefit from that here. <laughs> yeah. There's, um, there's a, a website actually called, uh, Imogene Olivia, uh, okay. dot com. And it is spelled, um, I M M O G E N E O L I V I A dot right. com. And uh, you can sign up for like a, a little email list. Uh, we're, we're trying to launch in the summer, kind of around like June or July. 
Um, it's gonna it's gonna vary depending on like uh, shipping fabrics and like all all that stuff. But that that's kind of the the window. And um, I'm on your list. It, it's it's really exciting. So yeah, that we we were there to do that. Amazing. So okay, not not to pivot from the real reason to go to yeah. New York, but how'd you like New York? I loved New York. I'm I'm from the Midwest. Yeah. Um, like grew up kind of you know fundamentalist Christian. Yep. Country, you know, kind of stuff. S- similar and background, different part of the yeah, country. Yeah. Yeah, and like I just there's not the, in in the Midwest there is not public transit really. Yep. You'll you'll find like bus lines in some major cities, but otherwise it's mostly just um you, you drive or you yeah. or you suffer. <laughs> Yeah. And it was amazing to be in New York and like be in our hotel and then go down onto the street, walk like 10 minutes, get to a subway station. And then, then you sit on the subway for like 20 minutes and you get to your destination. You don't need a, you don't need to drive. You literally don't need to drive at all. It's wonderful. It is really cool. Uh, New York is, is incredible in that way. The, you, the, you can get just, everywhere and and it it does feel great it's it's chaotic and new york city transit is not uh it's not perfect but it's certainly no. a, a huge change up and it was like when so the first so i grew up in maine which uh also fundamentalist christian background i've talked about pretty extensively you know i'm sure most people are tired of hearing me and my audience are tired of hearing me talk about <laughs> it but uh but same thing in maine it's like there is no public transit Good luck. Your, your your experience with public transit is going to be a school bus, and it's going to be a very long ride. Uh, my ride was like I. It was that one of those things where like I became uh, I I became an avid reader just because I was so bored on the bus, like <laughs> that type of thing. So I completely get that. And the first time I went to New York, I was like, man, this is wild. This is just it's it's wild to me, uh, just right. how how much you can get to. Yeah. Uh, so, did you get any good New York pizza? Did you get anything, uh, any exciting food that stood out to you? Um, so, I did get a pizza in New York, but I've been uh, informed vigorously that it is not, like, you, you know, to have authentic New York pizza, you need to be grabbing, like, a slice and then, like, walking somewhere. Yeah, um, true. true. And so, I we, we did go to, like, the first pizzeria in the United States, a place Ooh, called Lombardi's. Okay. Cool. And uh, it was... Um, uh, they, they, you know, I think they needed to to perfect some pizza uh, after Ooh. they got here. Um, and uh, that being said, um, the food that really stood out, uh, there was uh, a restaurant in Brooklyn called um, Hobra, uh-huh. which was like a Mexican Californian fusion restaurant. Okay, cool. That was really, really good. Um, ten out of ten. Would eat there again. We also went to apparently, and this is this is something I guess only real New Yorkers know about. But uh, we went to a place called Roland Roaster, hmm. um, that is basically like a slightly more upscale Arby's that opened in the 1970s and then just never changed. Wow! And has continually run the same advertisements on like local New York television for like 50 years. That sounds so uh, awesome. <laughs> it was it was pretty great. Like a real roast beef sandwich. Uh, it was it was amazing, and I do have to say I've been converted to bagels. Uh, oh. I didn't really understand yes. that bagels could be f- like a meal. Yes, and now and, I get it. And magical. Uh, in yes. New York City is the place to get the greatest bagels in the world. It is truly uh, a magical experience, and. Uh, yeah, I was gonna ask about bagels if you got any good ones there, cause yeah. uh, you can't. I don't know if you can beat New York City in the bagel department. I mean, there's literally bagel yeah. food trucks. It's crazy. <laughs> They're everywhere, we, and we, it's amazing. We, we went to a place called Bagel Boy, and like, it, it was it was just incredible. You know, like had had like stereotypical like like guy with like a bagel head on it. Like, <laughs> it, it was great. That's incredible. It was incredible. great. It was great. Yeah, like a good bagel has a lot of flavor. When you if you oh, yeah. spent your if you spent most of your life eating those fucking garbage Thomas fucking bagels from the grocery store, those things are trash, okay? I literally yep. don't eat them anymore. And it's just like first of all, 
your your fucking local uh, 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 you know Safeway or whatever, whatever your local chain is, the bakery is going to make a better bagel in the first place. But secondly, like even that is not a real bagel. A real bagel, they have a a lot of flavor and it adds a lot to whatever you're eating with it. So yeah, yeah I'm glad you got to have the good bagels. Uh, I spent a lot of time in in New York City when I was in college because I went to college in upstate New York, and oh, cool. um, my partner was from New York City, from Brooklyn. And uh, so I spent a lot of time in New York City and uh, I'm always excited to hear people's experiences going to New York City, especially if it's their first time going. Cause my first time in New York City was a wild experience. I was completely oh, yeah. overwhelmed. I was like not, I, I was not prepared for the magnitude of the city. Like you can hear yeah. about it, but in, once you experience it, it it's, 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 it's un, unimaginably packed and unimaginably large. It is a truly wild place, and uh, the food's out of control. So, oh, for sure. Um, yeah. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm, go ahead, oh. please. I was gonna say now I've been to both LA and New York, and I I feel like they're both sprawling cities, but in very different ways. Like oh, yeah. LA just goes forever. Yep. Whereas like New York just builds up. Mm -hmm. Like it was way more vertical than I was expecting. You know, uh, oddly enough, it's dense as uh, hell. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and it goes down too. There's the, there's so it's, it's kind of creepy when you think about it. Like how many layers? There's like tunnels, <laughs> there's decommissioned train uh, like subway tunnels that are on top or like the current ones are on top of other ones from the past. There's yeah. like ca basically like catacombs under the city of uh no longer used, you know, subway things. It's wild to think about. It's a, it is yeah. an incredible city. I've also uh, been listen. I'm just gonna this, this is gonna attract some ire from the uh, Los Angelites, but uh, sorry, Los Angeles got has got fucking nothing on New York, and uh, I know that's gonna make a lot of people mad. But uh, it's it's also just a lot harder to get around Los Angeles. Yeah, like, for sure. Yeah, it takes the, the transit's just better in New York. The the fact that the like highway, the I five, I think it is going through the center of uh, of Los Angeles is like brutal. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Like oh, yep. the other... There they go. There it goes. Oh, wait, never mind. All the LA people are saying LA sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from LA. It fucking sucks here. <laughs> nah. Yeah. The, but, um... the, uh, I, I, I agree with you though. Like it, it is, it can be a very overwhelming city to go to. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I, like I'm, I'm, I'm a bit on the spectrum and I, walked through Times Square with my partner and that is the worst place on earth. <laughs> it's I, it's I, crazy. I, yeah, isn't it? I hate it so much. It was I got sexually harassed by an Elmo like Ooh, while like I'm a sorry. 12 story tall like M&M &M, like was staring down and like it's just so overwhelming that like the police have to like put like a like a flashing billboard telling you to not get pickpocketed. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's wild crazy. place. We I've been to the I went to the I made the terrible mistake of going to the McDonald's in Times Square, um, which the experience was something like, um, well, it's also a New York place, but you know you know when you see the Wall Street things where everyone's like ah, 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 they're all yelling at each other and they're like <laughs> they're holding multiple phones and whatever and like um, oh, you yeah. don't even know what they're doing. You're like this is not. This is not a real action. You're just doing something to like, I don't know. Uh, that's how it felt going to the McDonald's there. It's like <laughs> like 14 registers across, all of them shouting out like order numbers at different, it was absurd oh, and terrible. <laughs> Although I will say I had one good experience uh, that was next to Times Square and I had to cross through Times Square in order to make it happen, which was uh, by literal pure chance, I got to meet, um, uh, I got to meet um, Ian McKellen and Sir Patrick Stewart uh, oh. by pure chance. Uh, I We were leaving Times Square. Um, we crossed like through Times Square and went down off like past Broadway and all that. And we went down a side road. And while I was there, I, no I noticed like a, um, like a theater. There was like a small crowd of people around a the theater. And I was like, wonder what's going on over there. And I noticed up on the uh, little billboard that it said, you know, Ian McKellen, Sir Patrick Stewart, they were doing some, I don't remember what the show was. And I was like, oh my God, like, are they actually there? And then, so I just That's ran so over cool. and I just hopped in the crowd and it was like genuinely an amazing experience. Uh, I will say Sir Patrick Stewart was, uh, was, uh, he was not very happy. 
He did not seem particularly <laughs> jazzed. Ian McKellen, on the other hand, was loving it. He was like loving the praise, and it was really cool to to get to just like shake hands and see them and stuff. Yeah. That was like a celebrity moment that I I strongly remember. So, you know, New they, York. They're friends in real life, right? Yeah, they are. Yeah, that's um, so cool. They're like super close, and uh, they've done a ton of projects together. And like, as I ended up looking up later, and like, they were like live blogging their whole like tour in New York. They were doing a bunch of small theater <laughs> shows in New York, and I just didn't know. It just by pure chance happened to work out that way. Complete roll of the roll of the dice, which was wild. That's so fun. Yeah, um, oh. New York is a magical place. I, I'm I'm really happy you had a good time there. Um, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm really excited to go back. That's that's awesome. And also, it sounds really cool. To, I've never heard of a textile expo, but I wonder, I wonder, how, did you get to feel a lot of cool fabrics while you were there and see a lot of, or was it more so, like talking about them? So um, I didn't get to go personally to the textile show. Um, just my partner got in. Oh, okay. Um, cause it, it, you know, it costs money to go in and I didn't, I, I'm not like a textile expert. Okay. Um, my, my partner went to like a, a, a very elite fashion design school for lingerie. Wow. Um, so like she knows what she's doing. I, I, I really don't. <laughs> um, but so she, she went and it's a lot of, it's, it's a lot of touching fabrics, but it's also like business schmoozing because um, it. it's it's That's a lot of them are basically fair, yeah yeah they're 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 trying they're trying to basically sell you like hey are you going to buy 5000 yards of fabric we we can get you all the fabric you need to cover your outdoor chairs you know kind of kind of situation yeah, yeah i mean i don't know to me a fabric touching ex expo sounds very fun uh, it but, does sound uh, I fun. Would I'm fail. excited to go next time. Yeah, I would fail the I would fail the schmoozing part, obviously, for the same reason that you mentioned. <laughs> I have no expertise on this, but it, going ooh soft that sounds nice to me. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. yeah. So um, we have a little more time. I wanted to ask what. It, so I haven't uh, I, I haven't been following what you've been up to lately, as far as uh, online and everything. What have you been up to? What have you been doing lately? What's your What's been your uh, What's been your beat, so to say? Honestly, I've been uh, I've been covering a lot about the um, a lot a lot of like geopolitics. I've been covering you know obviously a lot about uh, the the genocide in Gaza mm -hmm. and been talking about um, like when I got back, I did a big show about kind of this Christian nationalist border crisis situation that's been brewing. Um, that's well, we talked about that recently too. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm like torn between considering that one like, uh, like an existential threat because I am familiar with Christian nationalism and like Same. nationalists, and also like, kind of like, uh, well, B Biden could federalize this and like, kind of, put a stop to it, but, I'm I'm genuinely unsure about how this is going to like develop. So I'm. Yeah. Uh, I I saw some of Biden's responses and I was uh, I was not impressed personally. But, yeah, uh, no, uh, it's, it, been, it's that's been the case for a while. It seems like uh, I don't know. Yeah, I I feel oh, like uh, Biden's been. Isn't it isn't it a nightmare right now to just it's be sitting here going, fun. oh my god, such is a this, nightmare. Is this is fucking Grandpa gonna fumble it? Is he gonna fumble the easiest win that's ever come? And I'm like, I'm actually like, I know I get a lot of reassurances from a lot of different people. You know, I'm no pollster. And I know even the pollsters don't know what the fuck they're talking about half the time. Uh, but I'm sitting here and I'm going, everybody keeps telling me, oh, yeah, it's not going to be Trump again. There's no way. And I'm like, and a part of me says, yeah, that that checks because there's not all that many in the Trump cult. Like it's been dwindling. They're intense and they're angry, but there's still a small group of people. But I'm like watching the fumble and I'm watching the hardest fumble and I'm going, is it possible that he fumbles so hard that we lose to the fucking dwindling Trump cult? And there's a small part of me that goes, oh, my God, uh, we need, like, run. You know, like, there's that yeah. part where I'm like, oh, shit. And uh, I really hope not. But I've been uh, I've been sh I've been shockingly unimpressed with uh, Biden's recent 
uh, decisions. And of course, then you have like Pelosi today. I don't know if you saw that Pelosi going on and being like, we should have the FBI looking into these, uh, you know, looking into the fact that Russia is, is, you know, oh, is funding yes. Gaza, you know, people in support of Gaza. I'm like, oh, get this. It, it, yeah, We're no, cooked. it's, it's We're literally, it, it's literally more imaginable to like the democratic establishment that like, I, I, foreign powers are funding like people objecting to a genocide than like genocide is bad yeah y yeah you know like they they can't imagine that like the the common people would ever not like what biden has accomplished yeah because they 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 think he's done wonders right like they look at like the economy like you know turning around for uh you know some segment of the population and they're like ah yes we've we've done it uh we've secured the victory and it's just like what what are you what are you doing yeah no, it's no you a haven't weird thing i'm like it's just like i i i genuinely don't understand like the 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 thought process because it's not even like it is one of those things where there's not even an ounce of self-preservation because you would assume no. that like a, a, a cold calculating politician would go, oh, shit, we're losing popularity on this time for me to change my position on this issue to match what the voters want. You know, that's what you think when you yeah. go, oh, yeah, politicians are cynical. They'll do whatever for a vote. But then you see the Democrats and you go, they don't even want to do that. What is their motive? Are they just so deluded is it that is it that is it just that they're so siloed off and there's no outside information that there's just it's all f calls from inside the house and back clapping is that i don't know is it like that insulated that there's just no one who can say you're losing popularity and making decisions that go against your general po political base i don't know it's shocking. i mean i i i think i think that they are insulated from like the truth like someone people just aren't telling them that like this polling is actually real you yeah. know like they they think this is a temporary thing that by the time the election rolls around people aren't going to remember they're going to vote for biden they're going to fall in line etc but that's Why would really you hard gamble on that like it just right, doesn't make right? sense what's the motivation and it's just well, like especially yeah. especially because some of them are have gone beyond just like oh people will forget about it to like actively antagonizing their voter base like john I, I don't know if you saw that john fetterman like getting on the rooftop of his yep. offices and waving like an israeli flag like at at demonstrators outside where he works and it's just like what what are you doing yeah, why would you? Wait, and then why? also, like, his, like, whole pivot away from, like, I'm not a progressive when it's like, dude, you oh, yeah. literally ran on. It's, we live in a strange time, and uh, I am not, I am not looking for, it. And the the thing of, like, the, I, I meant to say, the thing that, um, uh, of people saying, oh, they're going to forget about it or whatever, or it's not going to matter, mm -hmm. is the biggest cope I've ever seen. And it's crazy, because they've been saying that, like, basically since this all started happening, and nothing of the sort has happened. If not, if anything, people are, like, more angry about it because nothing happened. Like, yeah, it is true that, like, there's less overall coverage of the situation, obviously. That happens with every single news story. Like, other time moves forward and other events happen, and so people get distracted and stuff like that and whatever. Mm -hmm. But, um... But like, as far as the sentiment that I see uh, online and offline, basically all over the place, like it really does feel like people are more pissed off that like, like it's like, no, we're not only have we not forgotten about it, we're remembering that you told us we were gonna forget about it, and it's just like, oh yep. Jesus, like the, the, the again oh, the the, the I, doom the doom fumble is like just floating there in the future, and I'm going, oh God, oh the, dear God. The other the other part about it is just that like they. They, they're banking on, like, his economic wins, right? They're banking so hard on them. And it's just, like, what most people remember about the economic wins are, like, you know, promising student debt relief and then not getting it. Yeah. You know, or or like, the 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 check at the very beginning, the co the COVID check, where it was yeah. like like, oh, actually, we said we were going to give you two, a two thousand dollar check, but we actually were including the money that came before. Technically, it was like like the, like trying yeah. to weasel out of having to pay for the bill at dinner or something like that, and it was just yeah. like, 
I don't understand oh my it. God. It, it, it's, it, it also uh, is, it, it's driving me nuts because I, I mean, like there, I, I, I saw like two stories in the last week where it's like half, half of Americans rent is now like taking up half of their income. Yeah. Like, or it was something along those lines. And then like the other story was more, we, we have a record number of people over 65 continuing to work and not retire. And it's like, these are these Easy. are not signs of like the economy doing well. This is actually a sign of things getting worse for people at the bottom. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't know. It's uh it seems like we live in a particularly diluted political timeline. And uh I, I feel like reasonable conversations uh about politics are harder and harder to find. And I, 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 that sounds like, you know, that sounds like, like a, like the preamble for like a, you know, everybody's too extreme, but I don't mean, I don't mean that. I just mean like who the fuck is actually connected to reality. You have like the concern, like Republicans today, fucking Lindsey Graham is going on every social media platform and being like, bomb Iran now. And I'm just like, <laughs> and this is like, and then, and then the Dems are like, well, you know, maybe we should consider making a strong policy on the border. Since uh, Greg Abbott says there's an invasion, we got to take him at his word. I'm just like, Okay, and then you have Nancy Pelosi being like, Russians are, are, are the reason why people are mad about what's going on in Gaza. Just deranged. Where, wh yeah, what is no. going on? Deranged, it's derangement. I don't know what else to call it. It's, it's, well, it's diluted. Well, and then Biden's response is just like, oh yeah, you know, uh, sign a bill into law and give me the executive power to uh, shut down the border. I'll do it day one. Like, what, what are you doing? What, what are you doing? What you are you what? doing? Listen. I want to put the razor wire down. It's just like, oh, <laughs> dude, what the fuck? Yeah, he, yeah. But Biden's like comms are basically just like I. The economy is doing great under me, and I personally want to put razor wire across the river to slash three-year-olds as they swim across. Like, what, what are you? What are you doing? Deranged. Why? Yeah, you don't Again, have diluted. to take this out. It, it feels like we're we're the 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 goose is cooked. In, in more ways than, than we've seen in a long time, which is hard, which is wild to say, because I feel like, you know, I've been plugged into politics for a very long time, long before I even started streaming. That's part of why I started streaming was because I was in, interested in politics and whatever. And I'm like, man, it's just been, it's been getting less and less possible to make sense of literally anything. And I just feel like, uh, yeah, I don't know. The, the Republicans, especially, I, you know, the Dems are really fucking bad, and I, I don't want to give the idea that like, you know, yeah, no. the 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 Dems are like just as bad as the Republicans, because again, like I said, the, you know, Lindsey Lindsey Graham on on uh, on Twitter fucking screaming about bombing Iran is just like that's normal for the Republican Party right now. They're mm -hmm. screaming about uh, about things that do not and should not exist. They they've got they've they've created a total reality warping vortex. And I just I don't know. I'm like, I, I, part of it reminds me of just like I don't know, like contending with the fact that we've always had to contend with like extreme religiosity and stuff like that, where people work themselves by one means or another into like a, a worldview that is totally incompatible with anyone that doesn't agree with their worldview. It's just they, they mm -hmm. can't. There's no agreement on basic facts. But with Christianity alone, when it's Christianity, it's like there's a religion there. There's thousands of years of history. Where the What the fuck is going on with the Trump cult shit? Like where, the, I don't know. I guess it plugs I, into Christianity and they're siphoning off fumes from it. I don't know. It's, it, it, yeah. I, I have a theory, and I think uh, my theory is that we're approaching the conspiracy singularity. Yeah. Where it yeah. all just converges into like one abyssal black hole of ideology. Um, because like I I don't know if you heard about like the the trucker convoy that's going to uh, the border to like fight for the border rights. No, uh, I haven't heard about that yet. Another oh, trucker convoy, um, huh? They, they, uh, the guy heading it got interviewed by like Tucker Carlson a couple days ago. And, um, I was like, what, what, what is this deal with the convoy? So I went to their website and I started looking at it and like their biggest backers are like caravanning Christian nationalists who like go around, who don't oh. have any like home base and they just travel around the country in these caravans. And 
they also have a presence at like flat earth conventions oh and like I, i mean and like they all all these like several of the people behind this caravan are QAnon influencers and it's just like it it's it's this growing movement that is like fusing Christian nationalism with uh QAnon with flat earth with like every conspiracy theory you know like even Candace Owens is getting in on it now with like the the moon landings were faked and like it's just becoming like this this thing that's getting more and more traction and the gravity well. I g- I genuinely don't know if there's anything we can do about it because they've created this insular media bubble that rejects anything that would potentially like pull people out of it. Yeah. And it it does, um, it does remind me of how hard it is to reach, like, like how hard it is to reach people. Like, I mean, the church that I grew up in, the cult that I grew up in, like quite, it's so hard to get any, any info or news in it's like it's chance it's chance that you get out sometimes like it was chance that i you know that my life path you know took me to uh you know uh, the fact that like i i was in public school before my parents uh you know got into the cult and then when i went to their stupid cult school i my grades started struggling and they were like oh that's not good maybe we should you know maybe we should let her go back into public school and so I went back into public school again. And because of that, like I experienced some worldviews that were different from my own. But so many people didn't have that. It's like p- literally like a b- dice roll. And when you're in those churches, there's it's so hard to even receive a signal from the outside world. I don't know yeah. what the answer is to penetrate that, but uh, yeah, hopefully we can figure w- something out. W- when you're in that space, no one, no one is like, hey, why do you believe what you believe? Yeah. You know, no one asks you to articulate it because there's a fundamental set of assumptions that they've like kind of grown into you. Yeah, right? there's a hostility to uh, inquiry. Um, mm-hmm. There's a hostility to doubt that like doubt is in and of itself like a sign that you're an enemy. It's 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 incredibly popular in not just in co- conspiracy spaces, but obviously in fundamentalist space as well, as I'm sure you know. But Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I was actually a, a Bible camp counselor for, for oh, two years. Oh, so, like, uh, like a VBS type thing? Vacation Bible yeah. school type thing? Yeah, me too. I did Basically. that as well. It seems like it's the, yeah, that's like the uh, the fundamentalist like favorite, uh, you know, favorite favorite thing to, to send to send kids to go do. Yeah, um, are, are yeah. you, it's, it's the, it's, I feel like it's a weirdly common track for a lot of trans people as well. Like, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. They're like, your parents are like, there's something different about you. You must want to be like a camp counselor. Like for me, we had to do, it was like, there was much a theater involved with it as well. Like mm, yeah. if you were a part of the VBS, you also were a part of the shows. They would, they would do these little Bible story shows and veggie tales esque, mm-hmm. you know, I, it's, it, I shouldn't even compare it to veggie tales because at least veggie tales is funny. These things were terrible, but you know, yeah. did they ever do, did you, did, did you ever get shown like, um, the kind of like answers in Genesis adjacent or prior to the internet. Um, like it's impossible for evolution to be real because the oh, uh, eyeballs 100%. exist. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, yeah. in fact, when I went, when I, for the year that I was in their Christian uh, middle school um, program, that was like, they had, they had a science thing that was entirely built off of creationist only science oh, books. No. And there was a huge part of that. And it was like, and of course, uh, uh, I've told this story before, but the sort of infamous um, uh, Kent Hovind, you know who he mm. is? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Kent Hovind. I, I, I met him and had a one-on-one uh, counseling session with him uh, at one point, which was very weird. And oh my uh, God. yeah, he was a weird guy. And uh, yeah, but he came to our church multiple times and now he's in prison. So I don't think he's out yet. So probably won't be out for a while but yeah he went to prison so that was fun but uh <laughs> yeah, everyone in chat kent hoven dodged the irs and beats his wife yeah yeah exactly that guy yeah, he's a weird guy well we are just about up on our time um but i wanted to thank you very very much for coming on it has been a absolute pleasure getting to chat with you and i thank you for telling me about your project i am i am on your yeah. mailing list now um anytime it, and and likewise i i, I love talking with you and I- extend the invitation you're welcome on anytime on that my, would be my stream. awesome yeah let me know if you're ever doing any events or anything or whatever if you just want to chat about something i'd be totally down 
Um, and if you could real quick just shout yourself out to the chat, that would be incredible. Yeah. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Riverboat Jack. I talk about news, politics, um, and uh, I, I'm, I'm a socialist uh, and, and calm at heart. But um, uh, And uh, I, I talk about the need for workers to control their own workplaces and how we can actually make that happen and also do do like current events so if any of that sounds interesting come on over and sometimes i also talk about video games and movies and stuff because i, I used to be a video game journalist so uh That's all so that awesome. stuff I didn't know that. cool and wonderful come, come on over please please go check out riverboat jack and thank you so much for coming on uh thank uh, you for having love me love to speak with you again in the future absolutely bye for now bye yay what a what an excellent what an excellent conversation man today's been off to a absolutely wonderful start that was so cool that was so chill